Hi everybody, this is Kevin from PeaceGardenSecrets.com. Today I'm making the third video of a series of videos I'm doing about the International Peace Garden and the esoteric knowledge contained by the, the layout and related topics. So, um, in the first video I tied together Washington with the International Peace Garden which is on the border of Canada and the United States in the middle of nowhere to a giant pentagram pentagon structure in the Pacific that in turn points at the pyramids in Egypt. So if um, you want to know more about this that I did that in my first video in the second video, I talked about how you construct the star, so the methodology and in, in how and how the star would get here and how it's symmetrical and things. So you can check those out and, and make decisions for yourself about what you think. Um, in this video, I just want to talk about physical landforms and how they conform to this. So if you start off down at Hawaii here, you notice that this ridge of undersea mountains and above sea islands tends to go along that line of the pentagram, a uh, pentagon. And same with this line of undersea mountains. And it goes right into this place where the um, continental shelf curves in on itself. So um, you can also see the continental shelf curving around from one corner of the pentagram towards the other. You can also see this ridge across the Pacific, a, oh, I don't know, a four, 4,500 kilometer long ridge that follows along the Pentagon. And then if, if you look at the various panels, there's, there's some difference between what's in this panel and what's in that panel, but these two panels are the same. So I'm, I don't know how much correspondence that is, but the um, the coast of North, North America seems to trend along it for a ways, and same with the the coast of Alaska trends along it for a ways. Interestingly, about halfway through, they both they both veer off here. So that's interesting. But when you um, but the thing about pentagrams and other sacred geometry is that you can draw inside. Um, it's a it's fractal in nature and so you can keep drawing pentagrams and pentagons that extend out beyond the um, the, the original one and you can also draw them in the middle so I've drawn another one on the next larger scale that that I can that um, and let's look at the uh, geography of it so you notice here this this region of the ocean is uh, quite a bit different than than this region which is quite a bit different than this region so but it's kind of the same as this region so that's some correspondence the um, the continental shelf in this case trends along this line of the pentagram until it reaches this point and then it seems to be influenced by this one wrapping around so there you have it and the other another piece here is that North America seems to come down and bend right around this line like it's being bent around this point and that point just so and if you zoom in there's actually a, a bay here that um, is suggestive of that line although it's not right on the line mind you how accurately do I have lines? I'm not sure. In in reality, I'm just making it up as I go. So this bay here is, you may recognize it as San Francisco. So when all the scenery finally loads, you can see the Transamerica pier, Pyramid, etc. Oakland Bridge in the background. So the next area of correspondence I want to point out, I mean there's this th this salt flats and lake is along the line that's you know semi-major feature um, is the Great Lakes and the way they 
cluster around the, the, the tip of this pentagram. So that's an, that's a, seems to be an obvious correspondence. And then if you look at, as you go up from there along this line, all these massive lakes in Canada trend along that line. You have Lake Winnipeg, I'm not sure of that lake, Lake Athabasca, Great Slave Lake, Great Bear Lake. And so that seems to have, seems to have a correspondence. And then you go over the top of the world here and we're back to the continental shelf and Japan seems to um, seems to correspond to it. So I found that things get even more interesting when I draw the next pentagram further out. So you can see that just in the case of the other one you can you can draw another one further out. Um, so let's look at this part first. So again, the, the first thing you might notice is that the continental shelf, as it comes along and starts to trend away here, it's like it's being pulled by this, and then it hits this line, and boom, goes into this big arch. Now, there's another, there's another notch here that maybe I have, the, I have it drawn wrong, and the line actually goes through there. That would make a certain amount of sense. Um, then down here, corresponding to this corner, you have Papa and Papua New Guinea. And then moving out further along, you have the typical um, difference in ocean between this panel and that panel. Or here, the, the difference doesn't seem to be as much. So we'll conveniently ignore that, as researchers want, are, want to do. And then this feature you know, that's quite a bit different than what's inside there and what's inside there. Then you get to North America. And earlier in this video, I mentioned how it appears that it bends around this point here and if you and then trends down at this line and then it, then it seems to bend around this line and trend off in that direction. All the while kind of keeping to the center of the um, well, that's not actually true, but you can definitely see the bend. Comes here, bends, goes there, bends. You can notice how um, the it separates Cuba from the Yucatan Peninsula, and how the water's deeper there. And if we move up here, you can also see the general. If I zoom out a bit, just how the whole continent's coming down to a, a point here and this whole continent trends down to that point. Um, so it's not exactly on the point but again do I have the lines drawn exactly right? Probably not. There just seems to be a correspondence so that's why I'm talking about it. Then you go up here and a major feature is the lower Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway heading on out it even goes between the gap of Newfoundland and Labrador over there. There's the Bay of Fundy and that trends along the same line. And look at, this is sort of coming along with this pentagram. There's correspondence on that line. It reaches here and it literally turns the corner to follow this line. Um, then there's the Appalachian Mountains that uh, trend along and are what making uh, or what made the Great Lakes turn the corner and so they come along cross in and then there's this curving around that we've seen in other underwater features that we can sort of see in the land feature that leads into Florida. Now before I forget I want to show you how this line trending up the St. Lawrence if you go to the ridges in the Pacific, look at how those ridges, how closely they match the angle that I, of, of the pentagram that I drew. You know, all the way down, it matches it, right? So that's, that seems to correspond there quite a bit. 
Um, so then if we trend up this line here, we go through uh, James Bay, right, with an island right there, more islands. This island shows up. This is a huge bay on this bigger island. And there's even the gap between Ellesmere Island and, and Greenland, although this line's not right on the gap, but like I said, who knows about the lines, right? You have Iceland and these other line, islands all lining up with that line. And then just even look at the general shape of it. It comes up, and once this gets in this side, it's correspond this is tending in the same direction as that. This all is tending in the same direction as that, whereas on this side of the line, it's being affected by something else, so it appears. And if you go over the top of the world, there's a couple river systems here that I drew in, um, that I traced, roughly, and down at the mouth here, they both empty very close to the line, and you know, if you take an average distance between the two here, I don't know, 284 kilometers is what it comes up with. I guess I could show you that. Oh no, 204 kilometers, I'm sorry, that was the degrees. 204 kilometers, so... Oh, I don't want to save it. Okay. So, the rivers, the, the mouse meet very close to the line, 200 kilometers apart, and yet this distance along this line is as the bird flies along the line you know 2600 kilometers those rivers meander over start almost at the same headwaters are almost at the same place and they're emptying almost at the same place right along the line where does it get stopped well the mountains of Mongolia which again it's turning a corner so it's trending it's it's turning a corner here, so that's what the mountains are doing. Here you get more of that circling back that we saw with the Appalachians and with the undersea. That's a massive lake. So I, I bet you there's just tons of stuff that, that corresponds to this, and I'm just touching on some major major pieces. So, And then here's the... Um, here's Korea, the Korean Peninsula. That's the final the fun place. So I just wanted to show you all that because I found it quite remarkable and you know initially I found this pentagram pentagon and and thought that that was amazing and then as I drew out the other pentagrams I noticed that um, all these other things correspond to it. Like, look at the symmetry here, over here with all the islands and, and Greenland and the balance. And, like, this on one side of the line and not on the other. I don't know what rules it's following, but it seems to have some correspondence. That's all. I find it very mysterious. So, I want to thank you all for watching. And I want to direct you to my website peacegardensecrets.com and check all this stuff out for yourself it's it's all Google Earth you can do the exact same thing that I've done it's not a mystery it's not that hard and um, I just urge you to to seek the truth in all that you do and uh, and like I say and try and act in integrity to the truth that you find and um, we have to wake up and this is knowledge that seems to have been hidden so thanks again for watching I appreciate it